Hello, everyone. I would like to welcome you to our event, uh, Overcoming Your Objections and Leveraging the Benefits of Networking. And thank you to our speaker, Sue Maitland, for joining us here today. Uh, yeah, I did mention we're going to be recorded, and I would just like to do a quick intro before we get started. We are here with SQUIST, which is the Society for Canadian Women in Science and Technology. And we are a not-for-profit organization that specializes in improving the presence and influence of women and girls in STEM throughout Canada. And they do that with a series of education, networking, mentorship, and collective partnerships and advocacy work. I'm grateful to be hosting this event, this virtual event, from the traditional territory of the Katsi and Kwantlen First Nations, who have been stewards of the land that we now call Maple Ridge for over 10,000 years. And I'd also like to welcome our speaker, Sue, of course, and our audience who are joining us from the traditional lands of numerous First Nations across the country. And with that being said, without further ado, Sue, I will pass it over to you to begin your presentation. Okay, let's uh, get the screen sharing now. Okay. So hi there, everybody. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Um, networking is such a valuable skill and, and uh, you're going to learn that um, I, I, I took, it took quite a long time for me to overcome my own objections and leverage the benefits. And now I love helping other people figure out how to make the most of their networking experience. So um, just a little bit on my background. I was in IT for probably a couple of decades actually, um, before I became a professional coach about 10 years ago. So I have experience as a project manager, sales executive, resource manager and recruiter in, the, in your industry. And so I have a bit of an affinity for women in tech and I really enjoy supporting them. And this is a great way to, to do that. So I really appreciate Squiss for giving me this opportunity to do that. So let's move into uh, the agenda. So I am gonna share my first um, somewhat traumatic um, networking experience with you. Some of you might be able to relate, although I doubt if you, any of you had exactly the same experience as me, but I'll tell you all about that. We're gonna talk about the barriers to networking and I want this to be a little interactive. So I am gonna invite you to share, maybe not your barriers, but maybe other people, reasons other people have given for why they don't do more networking uh, in the chat. And then um, Ashley and Suzanne are gonna help me with that uh, in terms of uh, sharing that. And then we'll see if I've got other reasons that I've heard from people because uh, uh, I've been doing this for a long time and I've heard all kinds of reasons why people don't network. Um, how I went about overcoming my fear of networking. And then I'm, I'm gonna try to help you positively reframe what networking is really all about. And that really is, is powerful in terms of changing your mindset and giving you a different way of looking at networking. Um, we're going to talk about the many benefits of networking, which I wish I had embraced earlier in my career, but never, it's never too late to, to do that. And, and then my top tips for successful networking. We're going to talk about um, virtual and in-person networking, and there's hopefully going to be time for Q&A as well. So uh, looking forward to getting into this. So I'm going to um, tell you about my first networking experience. So it was not a happy one. And um, in one word, it was traumatic. So um, I'll tell you about why the apron later. I mean, what I was experiencing was I had been told, Sue, you really ought to go and network. There's a women's networking group in Victoria. You really should go there. So I was told I should. Uh, I didn't, um, didn't really want to do it, but my boss had told me I should. So I thought I, I had no choice, really. Um, I was totally dreading it. I was walking towards the event. I was in full, you know, flight or fight mode. I wanted to turn tail and run. Uh, I didn't have a clue what to expect. I didn't know anyone at the event. And I hadn't even thought about how I would introduce myself. So, so my strategy was going to be get in there you know, and then find a seat and stay put, you know, to maybe talk a little to the person sitting next to me. That was my hope. It was a luncheon event. Anyway, something quite different happened. So um, let me talk about the apron. So I, I came into the event and without thinking, I volunteered information that I really shouldn't have. I shared um, with the people at the registration desk that I didn't know anyone. Uh, you know, I was, I was a bit nervous about networking. It wasn't really my thing. And um, a lady, an extrovert, who was uh, very enthusiastic, but not a very good listener, uh, and didn't really pick up on what was going on with me, said, 
well, you know, Sue, I've, I've, got a, I've got something you can do that's going to really help. You're going to meet lots of people. And she produced his apron. And right away, I was nervous. You know, So I was like, no, please don't. But she was one of those, you, you've probably met them. They're enthusiastic, they're extrovert, and they just don't listen. She didn't pick up on the vibes that I was you know, wanting to just low key get in there and sit quietly. I was hoping she'd introduce me to someone and I could sit and talk to them. Anyway, she puts this apron over my head. And then the next thing she does is produce a straw hat. And she puts that on my head too. I'm still protesting, but I, I'm at this point, I've, I have to go along with it. It's just too embarrassing to, to have to, you know, keep saying, no, I can't do this. And then of course, I don't know if, it, if any of you have guessed why she did that. But the plan was that I was going to sell raffle tickets. She produced these raffle tickets. And there I am in my outfit. And she goes, here, go sell these tickets. You're going to meet loads of people. <laughs> so it was very traumatic. It was the exact opposite of what I wanted. I did not. I met people and took money from them, but I didn't connect with anybody. And the whole experience was one which really caused me to kind of back away from networking for a long time. So um. So that was my story. That was very traumatic. Now we're going to, oops, what's going on here? Um, I'm trying to get down to the next screen. And for some reason, it's not here. Um, it's not going down. That's very strange. We are sharing. Why can't I go to the next? I have many more slides to show you. <laughs> um, could you use the button in the corner there? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The buttons. Yes, I thought I could just use my second button. All right. So, so I want to talk about. I mean, I've shared a few barriers that I had, but I would like to sort of brainstorm a little bit. And because we've got a big group, I think the best would be if you type it into the chat. But can you write down some of the barriers that that either have stopped you or that you know other people have told you are reasons why they don't do more networking? Perhaps you could just uh, um, type it into the chat and. Uh, uh, Ashley and Susanna are going to sort of share share what, what you're finding and we'll see how many of the barriers that uh, you've come up with are also there in my slide deck. I think a lot of these will be quite relatable. Uh, we have introverted was one of the first ones that came in. Mm -hmm. This one resonates with me feeling like you have nothing interesting to offer. Um, another small talk terrifies me. Um, awkwardness and let's see, newcomer to the field, feeling like an imposter. I'm a visible, visible minority in the room, feeling intimidated by people who know much more than me. Um, feeling doesn't fit. Time and energy after a full day of work. The feeling of walking on eggshells, fear of making a fool of myself. Uh, shy, finding it forced or driven by an opportunistic agenda and cultural differences. A lot Absolutely. of really, really good. Absolutely. And in fact, one or two new ones that I'm going to, with your permission, be adding to my, my list in future. So let's just uh, click on that next slide. So, so these are some of the many barriers that, that I've, some of, I've experienced and other people have shared with me. I mean, the biggest one, I think, for a lot of people is I just don't know what to say when I meet people. Um, so um, that can be challenging. Not knowing where to go to network is, is another, you know, because you... Your time is valuable. You want to, if you're going to go to network, you want to, to go to a place where you're going to meet the, people, the kind of people that you want to connect with. The wonderful thing is that Swiss is, is, is a great place for women in tech and STEM to, to connect. Um, this fear that other people are going to be judging you. Um, that is it. That's a fear for all of us. You know, we, we, we and, and it's, it's easy for us to kind of um, compare ourselves to others. And, and that makes it worse. So um, that's, that's a real fear. Um, not having the time, you know, it's, it's, we're all busy. It, it's the question of making that time. The introvert one is, is quite interesting. So I wanted to share with you a story. I was in Vancouver speaking at a project managers and business analysts conference on networking. And I, I asked everyone to think about imagining that they were in a situation where they were going into a networking event for the first time ever, they had never networked before. And I wanted them to get into thinking what that would feel like, what emotions would be going on for them, what thoughts were running through their head. And then I asked the room of about 70 or 80 people, so please raise your hand if you can't wait to get into that room and start talking to people. 
How many people do you think actually raised their hand? Three. Three out of the 70. Now, I'm pretty sure that a good half of that room were extroverts. So I guess my message to introverts is that, you know, um, extroverts find networking uncomfortable too. It's, it's not just you. It's, 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 it's an unnatural, we're putting ourselves in an unnatural situation where we don't necessarily know what to anticipate. So a little bit of discomfort is, is quite normal. Another thing that people feel sometimes is it just feels inauthentic, like everybody's trying to impress everybody else and, and uh, it just feels like. And, and the small talk thing, that was my thing. I was just a nightmare at, at small talk. I, I didn't know how to do it. It's crazy, but it's true. Um, not having an elevator pitch. So not knowing what to say when somebody says to you, so what do you do? Um, Having to talk to people you don't like, you don't want to talk to is another barrier. You know, sometimes you do end up connecting with people and they're just, they're not, you're not interested or they're trying to sell you something. That's a, that's a big fear for a lot of people. This idea of having to put on this act and trying to impress people is, is something that a lot of people feel when they, when they network. Some other people have said they're really uncomfortable with sharing personal information. And of course, you have a choice as to how much, how you choose to answer when somebody asks you a question. You don't have to share a lot of personal information with them. You can think about what it is you do want to share. Having no idea what to where to fit in, and I will tell you my story about that. I went to a conference in Vancouver. It was a tech conference, and in my mind, it was going to be casual because it was tech. I got there, and everyone else was wearing suits, and there's me with my jeans, and it was like a full two-day conference, no time to even go and shop. I just felt really out of place. Um, it was interesting. A lot of people just don't see the value in networking. It just feels like a waste of time. And, and others will just say, it's just not my thing, you know? And I, I, whoever said about being a visible minority, I, I totally understand, because these are challenges that we have um when we're not a visible minority imagine how that's amplified if you're standing out in some way um, from other people or where or if english is a second language and i i invite you all to um when you are networking be aware of that and 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 be kind to people and if you see someone who who isn't talking to anyone do reach out and and invite them to to join the group that you're with or to to go up to them and just talk to them because it takes a lot of courage to go to a networking event in, in a different country, perhaps, uh, and, and where your language is it's not your first language and, and those people um, deserve uh, being brought into the fold, so to speak. So please do that. It's a little mission of mine to, to get the word out about that. All right, uh, let's get back down here again. Next slide. So how did I get over this fear of networking after my traumatic experience? And really what drove me to do it was I had to learn because I started my coaching practice. I had been in IT for over two decades. I won't tell you exactly how much over, but quite a while. Um, I'd been a project manager. I'd been a resource manager and recruiter. And, and um, I got the calling. I realized that I was uh, my, my mission in life is really to help other people um, discover what they love to do um, and, and help them use the skills that they, they most enjoy using aligned with their values and, and find a, a, create a life that fulfills them. That's my calling. And so in order to meet those people, I had to network. You don't, you know, you're not gonna just bump into people and, and have that kind of conversation. So I needed to get out there and actually start to network. So here's what I, here's what I did. Um, <clears throat> I faced the fear, I recognized that it was a fear and I joined a formal networking group and they met every week. So every week I was forced to introduce myself and, and I would, um, there were some very experienced networkers in that group, which was great for me because I could watch and I could listen and learn from them. And, and at first it was terrifying and every week I would be, you know, dreading going in there. And, and then gradually what I started to realize was that, you know, this wasn't so scary and, and I knew these people and they knew me. Um, uh, and, and I began to get more comfortable. So practice is, is important and practicing what I wanted to say. So thinking about 
how you introduce yourself. Now, some people might say, well, that's not being authentic if you've thought ahead of time what you're going to say. That's not true because in the moment you can feel nervous. So you want to think ahead. What is, what is it I want to communicate? Do you want to communicate fear or do you want people to learn something about you that they're going to remember and, and perhaps want to follow up with you on? So, so I did practice my intros. Um, I learned that actually networking is not so much about you talking. It's about you being curious and asking good questions of other people. If you go with that mindset that it's not, I'm not here to sell myself. I'm here to make a connection with other people, to learn from them, to give them a chance to share things about, about themselves with me. And, and by asking those good open-ended questions that aren't a yes, no answer is one of the keys. And then I did my research. I researched where to go and what was expected at those events. So I, I mean, it was crazy. I knew so many people who were going to that conference. I could have easily, and who'd been for years, it was my first time at that IT conference in Vancouver. I picked up the phone and just said, hey, Shannon, what, what, what do I, what's a dress code there? What do people normally wear? And I wouldn't have had my awkward experience with the gym. It's a simple question. And if you don't know anyone, then you can still ask the organizer. They're, they'll always be happy to tell you what to expect at an event. So do your research. And then the other big thing that really changed everything for me was when I realized <clears throat> networking really is more about looking for ways to help other people. So if you can um, change your mindset to, to going to, I'm going to connect and I'm going to see what I can do for other people, not necessarily you personally helping them, you may be able to connect them with other people and resources that could be really helpful. I love telling people about Swiss. I, I love telling women that I meet about IWIS, not here on the island, but I'm a, a member of. Um, you all have information and resources that you can share with other people. And it feels completely different when you go with that mindset. Keep wanting to press me. So, so really how I overcame that fear was, was I researched what to expect, and where I wanted to go. I prepared how I thought about how I wanted to introduce myself. What was I going to say? Um, and I practiced. Um, now, recently, I, I heard someone say that, you know, look in the mirror and practice what you want to say. I haven't tried that myself. It could be, I don't know if it'd be good or, or bad. I haven't tried it. I, I will practice in myself and see if that works. But, but just knowing ahead of time what you're going to say is so important. I'll give you an example on the preparation side of things. Um, there's a women's group called eWomen that some of you may have heard of. It's, um, it's, it's headed by um, Sandra Yancey out of the States. But when you go to this event, um, they, you sit at a table and everybody introduces themselves. And then you also have a breakout group and you go and meet eight other people as well. If you didn't know ahead of time, they give you one minute to introduce yourself, to tell people what you do, to tell people something that you need, and to tell people something that you have done to give back in the last little while. So you imagine being put on the spot there and not having prepared ahead of time to be able to do all that in, in one minute. Um, and if you hadn't thought of something that you've done, you know, it could be really awkward. So definitely practice ahead of time. Prepare, research, prepare, and practice is my message. So now I'm gonna invite you to, to think of it differently. So positively reframing this whole networking experience. And that's what I did for myself. And that's how I learned to enjoy it. So think, as I said, you know, think ahead. What will you say when you meet people? When somebody says, so what do you do? What are you going to tell them? Um, you could say, I, I'm a data analyst. Um, or you could add to that and say, I, I'm a data analyst. And... Um, and I'm working on a project that is going to really transform things for people in the healthcare industry. And leave it at that. And then they're probably going to say, well, how, tell me more. How, how, what is it you're working on? It sounds interesting. So make it a little more than just your job title. And, and make it that something that maybe sparks people's curiosity is what I encourage you to do. Um, if you've done your research, you'll know where to go to meet the people that you want to connect with. So um, definitely do that. And, and, and a great way to um, do that research is 
when you meet other people that you enjoy, ask them where else they go. Where do they go to network? You'll discover places that you didn't even know. Um, Victoria in particular is, is a place where um, there's so much networking going on, but it's not all visible. So I'm always discovering new places just from my connections and, and talking to people. So I think it's really powerful um, to do that. Um, and, and you want to get to a point where you're feeling confident in who you are and, and show up as your authentic self. Don't, don't try to be someone you're not. We all know when, um, when we're meeting someone who's just trying to be someone, they don't feel genuine. And, and nowadays, nobody's impressed by that. And, and they won't, they'll remember you, but for the wrong reasons. You want them to remember you because they feel some kind of connection with you. If you've done your research, you can come with some ideas about what you have to contribute and how you can help other people. Um, that's something I'm always looking out to do. You have um, made time in your calendar. And, and I have to tell you in the past, once I got into this loving networking, I sometimes had like three competing events and I had to decide which one I was going to go to. For the sake of the organizers, I do ask you to please choose one. Um, I used to do a lot of workshops and, and, uh, and, and so often um, people wouldn't show up, but they'd signed up. So I, I didn't understand. And then somebody told me, well, I just sign up for three and then I pick the one on the day that I want to go to. So I want to commend you for showing up for this one. And, um, and do think about those organizers as well who, you know, they've set aside their time and, and then you decide, oh, no, I don't think so today. Don't blow it off because you never know. That could be the one where you're going to make an amazing connection where you really wish that you had gone. So um, definitely think about that and, and make it a priority. Remind yourself that you're not the only one who's a little uncomfortable. You know, even now I still get a little uncomfortable. Sometimes, you know, it really depends on the group and the, the environment. But if I'm going somewhere and I really don't know who's going to be there, um, I'll always research to find out more about what's going on and, and see if there's somebody that I know and, and know what to expect. And I, I'll always plan to show up as my best and most positive self. So I'm going to tell you a little story here. I was going to an event. It was a women in finance event. And one of my clients had invited me. And frankly, it had been a, a long week. I was pretty tired. It was hot. I just wanted to go home and relax. So I was kind of in this mindset where I wasn't very feeling very positive. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, I just had to talk to myself. And I said, Sue, you're going to this event. You know, get over yourself. But, um, just go in there and smile and be positive. And you never know what might happen. So I, I did. I went in. I smiled. I, I met some really interesting people at my table. And then over dessert, we were, there was a dessert table. I was talking to somebody there and I was saying, um, oh, you know, um, I didn't used to eat desserts much, but since I've been doing my self-care retreats, I, I do something at the place called the Union Club, or I did um, many years ago. And, um, and we'd go and have the, the buffet after we'd had the, the self-care workshop. And um, I said, but now I'm sort of really can't, it's hard to resist. And she said, you do self-care workshops? And I said, yes. She said, oh, my, my staff need a self-care workshop. Can you come and see me? And she gave me her card. Well, I went to see her. Um, it was one of the big banks. And um, as we got talking, she found out that I teach networking as well. And she said, you know, I like the idea of self-care, but we really need some training on networking. Can you come and do that? And it was my first paid corporate gig. And if I had not, switched my mindset and gone in with a more positive attitude, um, that conversation would probably have never happened. So um, it's, you never know what could happen when you, you go with that mindset, proper positive mindset. Have these good conversation starters, have those open-ended questions that isn't a yes, no answer. A really easy one is, um, oh, um, hi, I'm Sue, nice to meet you. How did you hear about this event and what made you decide to sign up? It's a very simple, easy question for people to answer. It's not too intrusive, but it begins a dialogue and it's not a yes, no answer. Knowing how to move on politely, if you wish to, is when you've got one of those people that you really don't want to connect with. Um, a strategy that I will use is um, I will say to them, um, it's really been nice chatting with you, but 
I feel I might be monopolizing you. And there's probably other people in this room that you'd like to meet. So uh, thanks very much for your time. And I will, you know, uh, I think we should probably both get out there and, and meet some other people. So you're not blowing them off. You're saying that you're thinking about them, um, that, you know, it is, uh, it, it's, it's being thoughtful that they're there to network. And if they want to keep um, connecting with you, they, they will do that, but you, you, you can manage, choose how to manage that. Um, go in that door smiling, even if it's a terrified smile, <laughs> most people won't know. It's a lot better than going in looking terrified, right? The, 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 nobody's gonna want to come up and chat with you if you're looking terrified, unless it's a very kind person who has perhaps heard my talk and has, where I do encourage people that if you see someone looking terrified or, or lonely on the, on the outskirts of the room, Go up to them and introduce yourself and they'll be so grateful. And they could be somebody really helpful for you. You never know. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, go knowing how, what you're going to share about yourself uh, and, and um, have thought about that ahead of time. Research that dress code. Know what's appropriate for fire. Go with that mindset that I'm going to learn from other people. And, and tell yourself there is value. This is a priority for me. I'm going to make this happen. So, um, let me just get that. So I think those are the. So, we're going to talk about the benefits of networking. Here, I'd love to do a bit more brainstorming. Could you in the chat tell me some of the reasons you think it might be a good idea to brainstorm? And then I'm going to suck on a lozenge for a minute. So and then, Susanna and Ashley perhaps. Uh, and tell us what people come in. What are the benefits of networking? Yeah, so we have job leads, building self confidence, career advancement, new opportunities, learning about opportunities that we didn't know existed, increased self esteem and confidence, meeting people in our field. Absolutely. Exchanging ideas, career advice, and job openings, getting to know about openings in the field, learning about strategies and paths, sharing knowledge, learning new things, finding allies, being exposed to roles and companies that we wouldn't have known about otherwise. These are some really great. Mm -hmm. Great points. Absolutely. Um, and I think some of them I have down here. Let's just get down to see what we've got. <clears throat> so yeah, you, you're going to potentially meet people who could prove to be valuable connections to you at some point in the future, or maybe immediately. Uh, yeah, learning about what's going on in your industry, keeping your ear to the ground and finding out what's going on in other companies or what you hear is, is happening. Um, it's a great way to build a group of trusted advisors, like your personal support network, because especially in the tech world, things change dramatically so fast. You can't be an expert in everything. So having some people who are in a different area that you can go to and ask the question when you hear something or you're wondering about something, it's really powerful to have that. And, and likewise, you can reciprocate and, and share your knowledge with them. It's a fantastic way to research new career paths and emerging industry needs. Um, I do really love LinkedIn for this. LinkedIn is a wonderful way for you to reach out to people who are perhaps doing what you think you'd like to do. And and finding out what it's really like to do that work. You know, it, sometimes we have a vision of what it's like to do a particular job and we go off and train for it and then you land in the job and you go, oh, this isn't what I thought, which can be really, um, well, financially expensive and, and also takes time away from you finding what you really do want to do. So I think that's important. Excuse me for a moment. A little simple. Um, also, um, you can find out which companies are growing that may have opportunities. And something to remember is, um, and this may be true in the companies you work in, but when I was a resource manager and we were recruiting, I would go to my staff first and I would ask them, do you know anyone who could be a good fit for this role? Because if you think about it, you've got an employee who's doing a good job. If they've 
bringing someone to the table. They're going to bring someone who they think is going to like working there because they wouldn't do that to this other person if they didn't like working there. Um, so it's so much easier to interview that individual rather than go through a pile of 100 resumes and try to figure out which are the 10 that you're going to interview and then try to figure out whether they're just really good at interviewing or are they going to fit. So you may find that you're going to meet someone who will say, hey, my company's looking for someone just like you right now. Send me a resume and I'll hand it in. And they may get a bonus for doing that. We used to pay a bonus for people who would bring we, I think we held on to it for six months just to make sure that they weren't just coming in and going. Um, but uh, yeah, why not reward people for bringing good talent? It saves so much time. Um, so you could be that talent that they're bringing if you get out there and network and happen to meet someone whose company is hiring. Um, again, we've talked about this, helping others by connecting them to, to valuable resources and people. You, somebody mentioned this, building your confidence. There's, there's no question, the more you do it, the more confident you become. It, you can raise your profile in the industry. People will say, oh, Sue, I seem to see you everywhere. They say to me sometimes, you know, I'm not everywhere, but that I'm visible. This jacket helps, of course. But, um, but you know, it, it starts to build your confidence. Oh, people do recognize me. They do know I'm a presence in, in, in town. Um, and uh, it, you can also, um, like, Volunteer opportunities, it's something that I want you to think about. I think I, I love that Ashley and Susanna are donating their time here to do this. It's a good organization. I, I donate to IWIST and I give a complimentary coaching session to every new member of IWIST here on the island. That's my way of, of giving back. But um, so think about it, but be strategic because you are in fact, you're giving up your time and you have a right to Think about it uh, as a cause that you care about, but also like what's in it for you? Are you going to make connections that will be helpful to you? Um, I have, if any of you go and check out my website afterwards, there's an article there about the do's and don'ts of volunteering that can be very helpful before you jump in and sign up for something. But it is also volunteering is a fantastic way to build connections, build relationships and, and get visibility. It's great. It's great to actually be able to share your passion for something you care about, although You'll notice I say in moderation because you need to be attuned when you're so when I first became a coach, I was over the moon about the amazing things that you could do as a coach to help other people. And I know that I was it was overpowering for a lot of people. You need to tune in and see is this landing with the person you're talking to or not. So absolutely tell them what you're passionate about, but keep it in, you know, in moderation. And if they want to ask more, they will. We talked about you can meet people who could ultimately refer you to job opportunities we've talked about this, you'll, you'll find maybe other places to go network with like-minded people. And you'll get that, that somebody commented, you know, getting that broadening your industry knowledge. It, it helps you make better decisions for yourself. So let's see if there are any more. So, nope. So we're gonna move on to my top tips. How are we doing for time? Yeah, we're good. Okay. So some of them we've talked about, but uh, some might be different. Re reframing any, any negative beliefs and showing up with a positive attitude is really the number one thing for you to do. And if you're going into that room, you know, just take a nice deep breath in before entering the event and smile. Smile. You're going to be more approachable. Prepare ahead of time. Know what it is you're going to communicate. And be generous. Look, look for opportunities to help others. Um, be curious, have those open-ended questions ready that invite conversation. Now here in Victoria, it may not be true of, you know, elsewhere, but people still like business cards. They will ask, do you have a card? I, I know we've got all the technology and we don't need it so much, but there's something about having a card and, um, or asking somebody for their card. Uh, uh, it's, it's really helpful. I find I will write down what event it was that I met them at and, um, you know, any little notes that I have about follow up that I might want to do with them. Um, so if you do get yourself a business card and you can have a personal business card, you can have the business card of the business that you might be working for. But you can also create a personal business card that you can take to network events with, which shares who you are, uh, the authentic you, you know, and with a little you know tagline or something that, that feels like who you are. So definitely bring them, but do not go around and hand out a business card to everybody sitting at a table that you're sitting at. 
that's nobody. <laughs> what happens to those business cards? Well, when you get home, you go, I don't even remember who that was in the bin. Um, you, if you've had a, a nice dialogue with someone and or they've, you'd like to follow up with them, you can always ask them for their business card. If they don't have it, um, you can give them your card, but then you're giving them the power to do the follow up. Whereas if you have their card, you can follow up. So I if people don't have a business card, I always have a little notebook with me and I just ask them to write their email address down for me so that I can follow up with them. So that's my thing about business cards. Um, there's still a thing here on Vancouver. And I told somebody who moved from Calgary and he said, Sue, you're right. People keep asking me for a business card. And I told you. <laughs> so, and if you do get business cards, don't get the ones that are black. You know, they're really cool looking and they're, if anybody has a black business card, I do apologize in advance. But if it is black on one side, at least have the back white so that people can write a few notes on it because it's really hard to write follow-up notes on those shiny black ones. But they do look very cool. I'll give you that. Um, showing up consistently is better than a scattergun approach of like, I'll do one, 12 different events, one a month, you know, different events. Where you build relationships is where people see you consistently showing up and they get to know you and they know they can rely on you and then you can you can build longer term relationships. But you, I mean, it's okay to go once if you go to an event and you go, this isn't for me, because you, you're doing that research. But once you've found a place that, that it's better to go consistently to a smaller number of events than try to do everything. Uh, definitely do some talk, research and bring some talking points. So like research what's going on in your industry. Again, you can bring this into the open-ended question. Did you hear about that new development? What do you think about that? Um, it's a great way to talk, and it shows that you're on top of things. Try to follow up within 24 to 48 hours if possible. Like that. It's not always easy. The ideal thing is that after a networking event, you've actually carved off an hour or so the next day, or even I'll even do it that evening sometimes. So I'll get home, and I'm still alert, awake and alert, and I'll send an email. And people are really impressed when you get back to them right away you know so if you can do it but but if you didn't get to it don't write it off you can still a week later you can still say hey it's been a hectic week sorry it's taken you a while but would love to connect uh, you know so there we go i always invite new connections to join my linkedin network um linkedin is a very powerful tool for networking and for those of you here today if you would like to connect with me i would love to connect with you on LinkedIn. I have 3,600 connections. So if you connect with me, then you start to have second level connections with that, those people too, which makes it easier for you to reach out to them. So I encourage you to, to connect with me. I'd love to, to hear from you and tell me what you, tell me your top tip that you took away from, from today, if you, uh, if you do that. Oh, don't, it's okay. It's not, it's not a must, but it would be nice. And then, then do sort of stay in touch with those connections. And keep them uppermost in your mind and share helpful links and, and information with them. So these are some added tips for virtual networking. Turn your camera on if you are ill. If you can, I understand today is a lunch and learn. And frankly, if you are eating your lunch, um, I think I avoid, avoid eating during a virtual networking. Just turn the camera off if you're starving and you have to have a bite of that sandwich to it. But it can be very distracting to see people eating. Um, during virtual events, so just keep that in mind. But do try to have that camera on because it's so you're here to connect. It isn't in person, but it's still a, a way to meet people and get to know them. So you do want to try to have that camera on if you can, and try to have good lighting. You never want to sit with your back to a window because when you do that, you're backlit, which means that we can't really see your face. It's it's. Um, and it can even look a bit spooky. So keep that in mind. I have a window to my right. Now I've got some other quite big lights here because I do videos and whatnot, but, but you can get something called an O light, an O ring light, and you can clip it on the side of your desk and it balances off the light as well. It's about 40 bucks, I think, online. So something to think about. If you are going to be doing a lot of virtual networking, you want people to be able to see you, to see your expression, not to have you be that kind of shady person sitting in the corner and you just don't know if you want to connect with them or not. 
try to sit still. Now you'll notice I don't have a virtual background because I do jiggle around quite a bit. And if you have one of those virtual backgrounds, it's very distracting when you're moving because it, it goes out of kilter a little bit. So they're very cool, the palm trees and so on, you know, but, but think about it. If you, if you can sit reasonably still, then absolutely go for the virtual background. But if not, think about skipping that one. Um, try to get there a few minutes early just to make sure that your technology is working well. We did that today. Ashley was very kind to come online early so that we, we knew that we could uh, get everything working. Um, bring that positive energy, even in a virtual event, people can feel your energy. They can see if you're engaged or if you're just sitting there. So remember that. Dress appropriately. You may be working from home or you may be calling in from home, but that doesn't mean that you don't need to project uh, uh, an appropriate image. So just think about that. You know, okay, the bottom half doesn't matter, except if somebody was to say, well, well let's stand up and do a stretching exercise and you've got PJ bottoms on that, something to keep in mind. So, <laughs> in fact, I did plan to do a stretching exercise, but we weren't out of time, but we'll do it before the question and answer. And, um, and then do be aware of those time constraints, especially if you're in a situation where you're going into a breakout room, um, because, you know, you may have like, 15 minutes and there's three of you and you each get five minutes and it's so easy especially if they're interesting people and they keep asking you interesting questions you could overrun and then you end up taking 10 minutes of the 15 minutes and then the other two people just get two and a half minutes each so so try to be aware try to even volunteer to be a timekeeper when you know that you've got 20 minutes and there's four people set the timer for five minutes each and, and volunteer to be that timer so just be be aware of that and, and make sure everyone gets their chance to, to chat. Okay. All right. Let's see. The slide or... No, we're there. We're there at the Q and A. So um, I think, I think we probably still should put the questions in the chat if you're okay with doing that. Let me see. I may be able to see the chat myself. I don't know if I can. We had a question earlier about what tips do you have for someone who's the only female in the room? The only female in the room. That's interesting. To be quite honest, um, I don't think of myself. I don't go into the room thinking I'm a female. I think I'm a person. I have done my homework. I've got interesting things to to share. I know how I'm going to introduce myself. Um, I don't. I don't let it be a problem. Now, it, 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 it's easy for me to say that because I've been doing it. But to be honest, when I was in IT, that was often the case that, that I was, you know, a, a woman and, and mostly men. I probably put on, to be quite honest with you, I probably put on a bit of a persona uh, some of the time, you know, a little bit of my shield going in there and feeling perhaps even more confident, perhaps not quite as authentic as I am now. Um, but um, I don't think you should be intimidated by the fact that you're the only woman. You, you're bringing something unique to the table as well. Um, so just, just do that preparing ahead of time and, and think about what you want to say. And if you're dealing, if you've got a guy who's just not, um, who's doing his um, macho thing, you know, just move on, just move on. And there are other people, there are allies out there. There are male and, and women are not going to get the equality unless we have male allies. So there, remember that those people are in the room. So just leave the ones that aren't and, and go looking for those allies who are going to want to connect with you. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, quickly, someone had a question about the volunteer organization you mentioned, IWIST. Okay, yes. Um, it's, it's they wanted to know where it was located. And well, yeah, a little bit more about yeah, it. It's located here on Vancouver Island, but we do have a number of virtual events as well as in-person events. So it's, it's. let me see if I can get into the chat. I'm not sure I can. It's, it's I-W-I-S-T. And in fact, it's affiliated with Squist, which is nice. We, we put a partnership together. So, sorry, do you want to talk about that, Ashley? I was just going to say, uh, for folks who are interested, we can definitely add that link and Squist link to the follow-up email that we'll send. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great, uh, yeah, it's a great Vancouver Island kind of institution. I've been a member for about seven years now. They do all kinds of things. They, they do wilderness wonders, which is a great way to connect and, and, and meet other people and, and uh, build relationships. And um, 
yeah, all kinds of different events going on. Sounds yeah. good. Um, the next question is, how can we overcome uh, um, people judging us about our appearance and knowledge? Okay. Well, I think the fact that you're assuming you're being judged is something you need to be aware of because we all tend to think that people are paying more attention to us than they really are. So we, we can easily build up this, this belief that, um, that people are judging us. And it could just be that they're distracted. They're, um, they're, not, um, they're not perhaps interested in, in what you have to share. Um, they're not necessarily judging you. Um, it's 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 a, it's a, it, to be honest it's all about building that self-confidence it's about um uh, and if you're feeling judged if you feel there's someone there i mean it it's probably more of a feeling of yours than than than, than a reality because as i say it, it's mostly about them i would actually turn things around and i would just ask them to tell you something about them tell me about you if you're feeling that they're judging you switch the conversation around and ask them to start talking about themselves and then you'll learn more about them and you might find that that it wasn't that they were judging you at all they they just were distracted for because of something else going on in their personal life we don't know we only see a little bit of, of people at networking events we don't know everything else that's going on in their life so don't make it about you you know make it about them make it about you being curious and wanting to learn about them that's what i would say um, okay. The next question is, how do you go about identifying opportunities to help people while networking? Well, you do it by asking those good questions and constantly be, being a really active listener and thinking about what they've shared with you and, and, and have in your mind, well, wow, that's really interesting. This could be a good fit for, you know, this person that I'd like to connect them with. Um, so it is about you doing more of the questioning and listening really well and then looking for those opportunities. Now, I have to say, when I first started networking, because I didn't have, do a lot of networking and have a lot of connections, I hadn't got that much to offer. The more you do, the more you learn about um, resources and, and interesting information that you can connect people with. So the more you do, the more you'll have to offer. But it does require you listening and thinking. What can I do to help this person? Do you find networking events are seasonal, less often in the winter, and things start to pick up as the weather warms? Um, not so much, to be honest. I think they're pretty much year round. In fact, in the in the summer, sometimes things will shut down for a month or two in the summer. A couple of the regular events that I go to take a siesta in in the summer um, for a couple of months. Um, no, and I mean, I have to tell you that um, during the whole COVID um, thing that we dealt with, um, I did so much virtual networking. I was, I felt connected. I built relationships across Canada, in the US, even around the world through virtual networking. And so I did not feel as cut off as some people did because I actively got out there and, and did that virtual networking. But And, and virtual networking events tend to happen year round. Um, but no, I don't, I don't think it's seasonal. And I don't think you have to, to wait for those opportunities. They're there. There's all kinds of opportunities there. It's just a question of getting your mindset there and maybe setting a, a strategic goal. I have a networking workshop, <clears throat> excuse me, where I teach people to come up with a strategy for their networking and set a smart goal. If you commit that you're going to go to at least one networking event a month, um, that's a minimum, um, you can find somewhere to go. There's always networking events coming on. I'm not saying that's what you should shoot for. It could possibly be more than that, but uh, worth thinking about. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have a useful link to a question bank for introverts? <clears throat> oh, that's a very interesting. I don't, but it's it's an interesting resource that I might develop. Um, if you, it, whoever asks that question, connect with me uh, you, on LinkedIn or go to my website and um, I, I will see what I can come up with. Question bank for it, it, it's a I mean frankly they're they're open-ended questions 
that anyone can use to be honest you know it's not just introverts it's it's as we talked about extroverts need help sometimes as well as to how to start those conversations but if the question is a question bank that you can use to ask of an introvert that's another dynamic there you know and you won't always know when you're meeting someone whether they're an extrovert or an introvert you can't always tell so um but anyway let's have a dialogue about it connect with me on linkedin um or, or through my website and, and we'll have a conversation find out more there was um, a related one on whether you have any go-to open-ended questions for networking. Well, I think I gave you one earlier, which is like, hi, I'm Sue. Um, how did you hear about this event and what made you decide to come to it? That's a great way to, to begin a dialogue. Another one is you could just say, hi, I'm Sue. Tell me about you. <laughs> and you it, you've immediately put it, the ball in their court. Most people like talking about themselves. They don't mind. And you get a sense of where they're coming from so that then you can take the conversation in a way that would be interesting and valuable to them. So those are just two little easy ones, I think. Yeah. Yep. Um, someone asked, how can we identify keep networking events and what are the recommended actions to give um, follow up to new connections? Okay. Um, well, it is, as we talked earlier, it's, it's sort of doing that research and finding out what's there, finding, talking to people that you like to connect with and ask them where they go. So find out where those events are. Talk to the organizer as well and find out a bit about the event of what to expect. And then what was the second part of the question? What are the recommended actions to give follow up to new connections? Okay. So I will always, always, always go on to LinkedIn and see if I can find the people that I've connected with and invite them to connect with me. And I will usually, uh, um, especially if it's a speaker, I will usually go onto LinkedIn and I will send them, a, I, will, I will never just send an invite, I will always put a comment. So I'll go into that to connect um, box and, and I will type in something that like, hey, I really appreciated you spending time sharing information today. It was really helpful for me. I'd love to connect on LinkedIn. Um, I invite you to join my network, something like that. And invariably they will, not, not instantly. Sometimes it takes six months or more because they're busy and then they'll go, oh yeah, okay, I'll connect. Um, so do that connection. And if it's something where you want to build more of a relationship, I would invite them to have a virtual meeting with you or a coffee meeting with you um, and, and try to think of something you can bring them. Maybe there's an article related to the conversation you had that could be helpful for them. So try to bring something of value to that conversation. That's what I would say. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, the next one is once we make connections on LinkedIn, how do we keep those connections going in the long run? Well, uh, and that is a, a great way to do it is to go um, look at the posts that that person is making. And if you agree with what they're posting, like it or make a comment because that you're going to notice the people who are commenting. So go and do that. That's also a great way to sort of build a relationship with someone that you don't know on LinkedIn. Start looking at their posts and, and uh, where, where appropriate comment. I mean, I also use it, to be honest, I don't accept every invite on LinkedIn. Um, I go and check that person out first. I want to look at the things that they, the articles they are posting and liking and making sure they're aligned with my values. Um, so do think about that too, because it does reflect on you to a degree. But generally speaking, the people who reach out to me are, um, are people that I want to connect with and I'm happy to connect with. Great. Uh, occasionally, hate might be an issue in public events as a result of race, politics, or even religion. What's your strategy to overcome that? That's a very good question. Um, <clears throat> I think I would be tempted to just to kind of exit if this is coming up and then talk afterwards to the event organizer about what happened and let them deal with it. I wouldn't try to make a big scene at the event, but I would take note of what happened and, and then I would, at a later point in time, I would talk to the organizer and let them know because that's their responsibility really, right? They're, they're hosting this event, they're bringing people and it should not be, it shouldn't have any place in, in networking and society for sure. 
Um, and our last question is, after having a traumatic networking event, how do you negate or release the negative anticipation before attending the next event? Well, we've talked about that preparing and being ready. I think a nice breathing exercise can really help, you know, taking those nice deep breaths in. Holding it one, two, three, and then letting it go. If you do that three times in, hold it one, two, three, let it go. And one more time in and let it go. You're going to be in a calmer place. And you're going to remind yourself that you prepared ahead of time and that you're going in with a curious mind. You're really interested in meeting people. You're gonna put that smile on your face and you're gonna walk in and people are going to want to talk to you. So it's, it's all about that sort of mental and emotional and physical preparation as well. And you can have a really good networking experience. So I think we're right at the top of the hour, aren't we? We are, it was perfect. Yeah, I, I hope I didn't overrun because I think you wanted to had a few notices for the Swiss. Just a few seconds of um, information to share. I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who came out to our uh, virtual event today. And again, thank you so much, Sue, for leading this. I saw many compliments for your presentation and your oh, points you. rolling in throughout in the chat. And I would say, as Susanna has kindly put in there already, there's links to Sue's website and her LinkedIn, as well as the Squist website, which is squist.ca forward slash events, where you can find more um, events like this one coming up. And we always have more rolling in there. So be sure to check through. And yeah, we'll be sharing this recording, all the links that have been mentioned. And I just want to let everyone just have a wonderful rest of your day and hope that it's not too icy and slushy and that the sunshine comes out for everybody. Thanks for making time, everyone. It was a pleasure getting to know you. All right. Bye.